If you're running VMware, if you're running uh, ESXi hosts, if you're running vCenter to sort of manage all of these ESXi hosts, if you're running even VMware in the cloud, there's this great technology called Affinity Rules. And there's this other thing called Anti-Affinity Rules, essentially the opposite of Affinity Rules. We're gonna be covering what that is. What is an Affinity Rule? And also more importantly, once you know what it is, how do you actually set this thing up inside of your VMware environment. And to make all of this thing happen, you have your ESXi hosts, but you're not gonna be able to create affinity rules unless those ESXi hosts are being centrally managed in a vCenter environment. So let's now log in to our VMware environment. We're gonna log into our vCenter and we're gonna show you how to set all of this up. Let's say the scenario, you've got a number of domain controllers. If you don't know what a domain controller is, you're gonna to have to go and do a bit of research, but that's essentially where Active Directory lives. That's where your domains live. Everything talks to your domain. It's really the bread and butter. Let's say you've got a few domain controllers. You've got three domain controllers on your network, and you've got more than one because you wanna make sure that there's highly available networks for your domain. So if one domain controller goes down, another domain controller is still there and still available. Really, really good. My environment, I've got two ESXi hosts, 103, 104. Let's say I've got two domain controllers and they're both running on 103. On 103, if I look at my VM list, do you really want two domain controllers running on the one host? Probably not, because what's gonna happen is in the event that you have a highly available incident, the host goes down, you lose both domain controllers, and that would be pretty bad. What if you've got a cluster of databases? You don't want all of those to be on the one host, because if you have an outage, that could be pretty bad. What if you've got a database that is really, really resource hungry, like a warehouse of a whole bunch of data? You've got a few of those, you don't want them all to be on one host because the resources are gonna be insane. You don't want all of these data warehouses to be able to go and grab resources at the same time, potentially slowing things down. So what do you wanna do here? Well, you wanna actually have maybe a domain controller, a DC on one host, and another DC on another host. Maybe a database server on one host, and another database server on another host. And that sounds great. Of course, you wanna go and spread the load of all of these virtual servers across your different hosts. But wouldn't it be even better if you actually put rules in place that prevent you from actually getting these two VMs together? Let's say you have a junior administrator on your network, you know, working on, in your network, and he doesn't know that these are domain controllers. What if he accidentally vMotions a domain controller from the old host, from this host, over to this host, and that's where the other domain controller sits. And it, it'll work, it'll just work. A DC will move and it'll sit now on the same host where your DC is. What about if you have DRS enabled? We looked at DRS, automatically vMotioning things over. You probably want some controls in place here where you don't want DRS to move your critical servers that you want to stay apart to the same host. So that's where the affinity rules come into place. You can actually now put rules in place to say, these hosts, I do not want these hosts, sorry, these VMs, I do not want these VMs to sit on the same host. I want them to be apart. Same scenario, what if you've got a app application server and a web server, and because of a performance perspective, you want them to be as close to each other as possible, you want the best traffic flow between the two, you don't want them sitting on different physical infrastructure to go over a network, to go over different sort of storage. You may actually want your web server and your application server to sit on the same host. So you may actually have a rule that says these two VMs need to always be part of the same host. If you're gonna vMotion them, you vMotion them together. Or maybe you could say, I don't want the vMotion at all. If you've got high availability, the host goes down, they need to be spun up on a pool of potentially five other hosts. Well, you wanna make sure that it spins up those hosts, those VMs on one host and not splitting them up because you always want those two to be together on the one host. So that's where we come into affinity rules and anti-affinity rules. Great, great feature. You need to learn about it. I'm gonna go and select my production cluster and I've got all my settings in here. 
Here I've got VM host rules and I've got VM host groups. First things first, I'm gonna go and create a group. Let's show you what this is. I'm gonna go and select add. I'm now gonna call this group one DCs. So this is the group that I'm gonna be calling DCs. And what type is it? Well, it's a VM group or a host group. VM group is gonna be rules against a VM, a virtual machine. Host group is a rule against a host. So let's go through each of these. Let's leave VM group first. I'm gonna now say add. What I wanna happen right here is I'm gonna go and create a few VMs in this group. It's gone and scanned my entire cluster and here are all the VMs that are running on here. So I've got DC01 right there and perhaps Kali Linux 01. Maybe that's running a domain controller. Let's, let's just pretend. I want those two to uh, have some parameters, some, some rules applied against them. I'm gonna say okay. So now I know group one DCs, this one right here, has these two. These are all my DCs. These are the DCs, okay? That's my DCs and they're part of my VM group. I'm gonna say okay. I've now created a new group called group one DCs and we now know that it contains inside of it two VMs which I'm saying that they're both domain controllers. So I can go and create multiple groups. I can go and create another group in here. I'm gonna say, Good hosts and host group. I'm going to say add. I'm going to go look up my hosts over here. And as part of this one, I'm going to say, well, that's my greatest host, 104, and select OK. So I've got now two groups group one DCs, there are my DCs, and there's my good hosts. And now I'm going to go into the rules section. I'm going to select add. Before I give it a name, let's have a look at what options are available to me. I've got keep virtual machines together. I want these VMs to always be together. I want to separate those virtual machines. I want to tie a virtual machine to a host. And I want to do virtual machine to virtual machine. What's virtual machine to a host? Well, let's say, for example, I've got a VM that requires a lot of resources and I want it to be always sitting on a really, really high spec host. Maybe I've got what I've got right over here. I've got my production host, which are the highest spec ones. And then I've got a whole bunch of older hosts, which are a little bit less spec. Well, I could say I want to, I want to tie a VM to a host because that's the host that is going to be running the best. Or I've got a VM that is running just a test environment. I don't want it to be running on the best host. So I could tie it to a lower spec host as well. I could keep virtual machines together. I could separate those VMs. As I mentioned, with the separate the VMs, DCs, I want those DCs to be on separate hosts. I could keep them completely separate so that when high availability kicks in, vMotioning will not let me vMotion. This is the great thing, is you've got a junior tech, or maybe you yourself, you're doing it by accident. You're wanting to migrate a VM from one host to another. If there is a rule in place that says, hey, that VM cannot move to that host because on that host, there's a VM that you have said you want to separate. It'll actually will give you a warning in the compatibility section to say, you cannot do that. You're not allowed and it will not let you. Really, really cool feature. And of course, DRS will also take advantage of all of that. So what in our case, we're going to say keep virtual machines together. So perhaps I want to keep my uh, web and my DB together. My web servers, my database servers together because I just want them on the same host because they love each other. I'm gonna select add. And in here, I'm gonna select which VMs we want to include. So perhaps this is my uh, Windows 11 and Ubuntu server, just for argument's sake. I'm gonna select both of those. We wanna always keep those two together and select okay. So I've now just created a new host rule, web plus DB together. And let's just do one, one more. Let's say AGUDC01, that one right there. I wanna stick that host against 104. So let's just go back into here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new rule. Stay on host. So I'm now gonna say virtual machine to host. Now what VM group? Well, we said VM group one DCs, that's where my DC01 was, and good hosts, that actually included my 104. So what I'm gonna say is my virtual machine that are a member of the cluster VM group, DC1, this one here, must run on host group, good hosts. Okay, good. 
Looks great. I've now got a host uh, rule, VM host rule created. Let's say I've forgotten this down the track. I put some rules in place or I've got somebody new that started in the business, a junior person, and they're gonna to wanna to go and migrate something. Or perhaps DRS wants to go and migrate something. Well, let's go ahead and try and migrate DC01. I'm gonna now change both compute resource and storage. And what I'm now gonna say is I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna move it to 103. Now, if you remember, I've now got an affinity rule to say it can't do that. Look at that, virtual machine, DC01 on 103 would violate a virtual machine host affinity rule. Can't do it, it's just not working. It's not gonna let me migrate it because I've put a rule in place to say this cannot happen. If you found this helpful, let me know down below. If it didn't help you out, let me know down below. Would love to know because you giving me feedback helps me to make better content in future. And also do the subscription button. A lot of you check out my videos every single week and that's great and I appreciate it. But the majority of you are not actually subscribed. So if we wanna beat that YouTube algorithm and get more subscriptions that you don't miss out on anything that we're releasing, click on that button on the bell. That would be brilliant. We'll see you on the next video. Catch you then.